In this video, I'll discuss the two attribution theories that explain how people form judgments about why people act the way they do. The first theory I'll discuss is called attribution theory. It was developed by Fritz Heider, who frequently is referred to as the father of attribution theory. Heider discussed what he called naive or common sense psychology. In his view, people were like amateur scientists, trying to understand other people's behavior by piecing together information until they arrived at reasonable explanations or causes. Heider proposed a simple dichotomy for people's attributions. He argued that we either form internal attributions in which people infer that a person is behaving a certain way because of something about that person, such as a trait or attitude, or we form external attributions in which people infer that a person is behaving in a certain way because of the situation that he or she is in. For example, if we see that a, that a father has just yelled at his young daughter, we can make one of two attributions. One option is to make an internal attribution, deciding that the cause of the father's behavior was something about him, his disposition, personality, attitudes, or character, an explanation that assigns the causes of his behavior internally. For example, we might decide that the father has poor parenting skills and disciplines his child in inappropriate ways. Alternatively, we might make an external attribution, deciding that something in the situation, not in the father's personality or attitudes, caused his behavior. If we conclude that he yelled, yelled because his daughter had just stepped into the street without looking, we would be making an external attribution for his behavior. Although either type of attribution is always possible, Heider noted that our tendency is to see the causes of a person's behavior as residing in that person. Thus, we tend to prefer internal attributions over external attributions. Recent research backs this up and suggests internal attributions may be our default response unless we have the motivation and cognitive energy to override this automatic response. The second theory of attributions is Kelly's covariation model, which focuses on how people decide whether to make an internal or external attribution. In addition, Kelly's covariation model focuses on instances where you have multiple observations of behavior. We make attributions using the covariation principle which tells us that in order for something to be the cause of a particular behavior, it must be present when the behavior occurs and absent when it does not occur. In addition, we use the discounting principle, which is the notion that whenever there are several possible causal explanations for a particular event, we are less likely to attribute the cause of behavior to one particular cause. According to the covariation model of attributions, people rely on three types of information when trying to make accurate attributions. One of the types of information people use to form attributions is consensus information. This is the extent to which other people behave the same way toward the same stimulus as the actor does. In other words, does everyone do it? A second type of information that people use to form attributions is distinctiveness information. This refers to the extent to which one particular actor behaves in the same way to different stimuli. In other words, does it only occur in this situation? The third type of information that people use to form attributions is consistency information. This is the extent to which other people behave the same way toward the same stimulus as the actor does. In other words, does the behavior occur repeatedly? 
Research on the covariation model suggests that people are most likely to make an internal attribution when consensus and distinctiveness are low, but consistency is high. In addition, they are most likely to make an external attribution when consensus, distinctiveness, and consistency are all high. Let's look at some simple examples to demonstrate these concepts. Imagine you teach a college class and notice that Hazel slept through your Tuesday class. You'll probably wonder to yourself about Hazel's behavior and either make an internal or external attribution that explains Hazel's sleeping. According to the covariation model, if you have had multiple chances to observe Hazel in class, you'll consider consensus, distinctiveness, and consistency information when making your attribution about the cause of Hazel's sleeping behavior. So imagine if I consider consensus information and note that no other students fall asleep in my class. Consensus is low. In addition, I consider the distinctiveness of Hazel's behavior and find out that Hazel's behavior is not unusual for her because she sleeps in her other classes. Distinctiveness is low. Lastly, I consider consistency and note that Hazel consistently sleeps in all of my classes. Consistency is high. In this example, consensus and distinctiveness are low and consistency are high, though I, thus I am most likely to make an internal attribution and attribute Hazel sleeping in my class to some internal characteristic of Hazel, such as laziness. Let's look at a second example in which I try to understand the cause of Hazel's behavior. Imagine a situation in which I know that many students sleep in my class. Consensus is high. In addition, I know that Hazel never sleeps in other professors' classes. Distinctiveness is high. And lastly, I know that Hazel sleeps in all of my classes. Consistency is high. In this example, consensus, distinctiveness, and consistency are all high. Thus, I am most likely to make an external attribution and attribute Hazel sleeping in my class to some external characteristic of Hazel, such as the class being boring. So let's look at a second example. Why is Jack so anxious to go up the hill with Jack, with Jill? Is it due to some internal characteristic of Jack? Is he desperate to have a girlfriend? Is he too weak to carry the bucket himself? Or is it due to some characteristic that is external to Jack? Is it because Jill is smart and kind? Is Jack being paid to go up the hill with Jill? What is the cause of Jack's behavior? Let's use the covariation model to try to understand Jack. So imagine we consider the available, available consensus information and note that no other people go up the hill with Jill. Consensus is low. In addition, we consider distinctiveness information and note that Jack goes up the hill with a lot of people. Distinctiveness is low. Lastly, we consider consistency information and note that Jack goes up the hill with Jill every week. Consistency is high. In this example, consistent consensus and distinctiveness are low and consistency is high. Thus, we are most likely to make an internal attribution about Jack and maybe decide that Jack is a womanizer. Now let's look at a second example of how we would judge Jack's behavior if the information was different. 
So imagine we consider the available consensus information and note that many people want to go up the hill with Jill. Consensus is high. In addition, we consider distinctiveness information and note that Jack only goes up the hill with, with Jill. Distinctiveness is high. Lastly, we consider consistency and note that Jack goes up the hill with Jill every week. Consistency is high. In this example, consensus, distinctiveness, and consistency are high. Thus, we are most likely to make an external attribution. Jack goes up the hill because Jill is special. So, to review, internal attributions occur when consensus is low. This means the behavior is unique to the person. And distinctiveness is low. This means the person displays the same behavior with different targets and in different situations. And when consistency is high, which means the person's behavior occurs reliably across situations. In contrast, external attributions are likely to occur when consensus is high. This means other people behave similarly in the same situation. And when distinctiveness is high. This means the person's behavior is specific to that situation or target. And when consistency is high. Which means the person's behavior occurs reliably across different situations. In conclusion, the covariation model assumes that people make causal attributions in a rational, logical fashion. This is in fact supported by several studies that generally confirm people do indeed make attributions in the way that these models predict. However, research also suggests that consensus information is not used as much as Kelly's model predicts. In addition, People do not always have the relevant information they need on, on all three dimensions, so they're often unable to make judgments using consistency, distinctiveness, and consensus information if they do not have access to it. Lastly, people do not always behave in systematic and logical ways. Oftentimes, attributions can be distorted by self-serving motives and by biases in reasoning. We may decide that Jack and Jill went up the hill so, they, that, so that they would have a quiet place to read their social psychology book. Because after all, social psychology is the best psychology.